Welcome back to Unbandaged, the most popular podcast in America, according to us and our many listeners. Two weeks ago, we had 40,006 40, listeners. But unfortunately, folks, I don't have a number for you this week. With the July 4th holiday on a Tuesday, I don't even, you know, when they do these things in the middle of the week, these holidays, it just screws everything up because, you know, nobody goes to work on Monday and then Tuesday they're off and then Wednesday they're hungover. So we don't have a number, but I'm sure it's exploding. Anyway, uh, for everybody, we're working with lovely Ventura, our social media expert, and we are now on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And today, this new thing, Thread, came out, which is uh, the metaverse or the meta um, new thing competing with Twitter. So it'll be exciting. We're going to try and get on that too. Uh, Gavi called me as soon as it came out. What do they have? How many millions of users now? 35 million joined today already. That's it's unbelievable. 35, 35 million, million, right? So if we can, and it's easy and it's easy. It goes with your Instagram account. So it's, uh, I think, I think it's going to be good competition for Twitter right now. A lot of people are going to, uh, are going to use both actually to tell you the truth. Right. So if we can only get like five or 10 million in the 35, we'll be doing good, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's start out with July 4th, probably the greatest holiday of the year. There's so many great holidays, but July 4th, where we love and respect um, the fact that we are here in America, a wonderful country. We can do and say whatever we want to do. We have freedom of speech. We can go out to restaurants. We can drive our cars. We can go in the parks. And, you know, I sit there and I hear this, these people like this representative Omar um, spout. It's not even free speech. It's like hate how they hate America and they can't stand America. Well, I'd like to go with her and walk her through Arlington Cemetery. I don't know if you've ever done that, Gabby. I mean, you'll cry your eyes out. It's the most incredible experience of these young kids that gave up their life so that you and I, you know, we could, we went to high school and then college and here we are today doing a podcast. It's unbelievable that, that we have these freedoms and um, it, it just is a feel good holiday. And then you eat way too much at your barbecue and, you know, I'm reading all this stuff about all these celebrity parties everywhere out in the Hamptons, you know, the uh, uh, white party held by Michael Rubin. And I did read the article today about all these, all the watches all these people are wearing. My God, it's unbelievable. Did you sell everybody the watches up there? Or? No, but, but we dressed quite a few of them. We did dress uh, quite a few of them. And uh, it's nice to see them. Uh, with the watches, it's uh, it's nice, you know. It's very uh, they they're wearing unique watches, hard to get watches, and uh, it's it happens to be good to see. But I want to just tell you one thing. You mentioned July Fourth, and I want to tell you how I feel about July Fourth. All holidays, it seems like all the holidays that when you were younger and you used to look forward to, from July Fourth, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day, uh. You name the holiday, and it was like it was a time that everybody enjoyed them. And it seems like somehow or other, the country is so divided that we're, they're taking away every holiday. If it's Christmas, you're using uh, you got people that are against uh, against Christians, and it should, you have to say Happy Holidays. You can't say Merry Christmas anymore. Right? You know. Being, being Jewish, I'm happy with Merry Christmas. It's a happy holiday. Everybody's there. I, no one has. I, I don't know. I don't have a complaint with it. I, I think it's the great. I think that's one of the best holidays out there. The people that are mean and upset during the week, everybody's happy that day. Thanksgiving, you're now infringing upon that. Uh, the Indians, like what we did to them. It's like all of a sudden they take away Thanksgiving. July Fourth, we stole. Uh, we stole that one. We we took over the land. There's not a holiday out there that you can't enjoy anymore without like feeling like you're like a, an oppressor, that you did something wrong 
just enjoy the holiday. How, how do you how do you argue with people that are entitled to free speech? I mean, think about it. They're 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 speaking freely about how they feel about. I mean, Christmas. Why are you picking on Christmas? I agree with you. Christmas. Ben and Jerry. Why why is Ben and Jerry picking on uh on July fourth? I mean, don't people eat ice cream during July fourth? It's hot as bowls outside. You want some ice cream, and now you gotta look at the brand and you gotta sit there and you say, gee, now you're taking away ice cream on a hundred degree day. You have to look at it and think that this guy wants you to give back Mount Rushmore? Seriously? Well, I was reading about this Ben and Jerry. Well, Ben and Jerry sold the company for like 135 million, the two guys, but to Unilever, gigantic uh, worldwide conglomerate. But they retain all the um, rights to say and do whatever the hell they want. Who the hell's selling, who's paying that much money and letting these guys spout this crap that they did? It was unbelievable what came out this weekend. I mean, it's just not fair. <laughs> I mean, they did little things when they were picking on Israel. You know, a lot of people don't even, it doesn't affect them, so they don't really give a crap. But now, all of a sudden, giving back Mount Rushmore, telling us that we have to start giving back the land. I mean, where does this come from? I mean, all it is is July 4th, the little fireworks, little celebration. Let's be thankful that we have a country that we that we stood up and we're free. You know, Canada, they have Canada Day. They didn't even, like, break away. They still have the queen on the currency. We at least, like... Uh, have our own country. And now we have to like feel ashamed that we have a country. Well, how about Juneteenth? Does anybody complain about Juneteenth? Juneteenth. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think is everybody that the would be Is that the name of it? Juneteenth? Yeah, it is. But I think people would be scared to say anything about that, you know, because it's got to be politically correct. Right. I mean, just That's the problem. Just, I mean, just to let you know, uh, we you're in you're in uh, Philadelphia right now, where there's like shootings <laughs> all the time. I mean, si since you've been there, you've been there for two weeks. We've got 36 people dead all over the place. I have these and, in the side right outside my house here. Yeah, you know? I, I, I mean, it's unbelievable. But here's the thing that's crazy: there's shootings in uh, Philadelphia, there's shootings in Baltimore, there's shootings in Chicago, there's shootings in New York, there's shootings in Los Angeles, San Francisco. Where's Al Sharpton? Like, where is he? I mean, no money? You got to follow the money. No money, so there's no Al. I mean, like, seriously, there, you know, if one, if one person that was white was involved in this, Al Sharpton would be there. Yeah, I, it, there was something like 350 murders over the weekend. I mean, it's just a staggering number. Most of them are black-on-black -black crimes or murders. And... It, these cities, I mean, Philadelphia now is, is a very, I, I live in the suburbs of Philadelphia or, or this home I'm in is where I raised my kids. I live in Florida, but um, by the way, I said that for tax reasons. I do live in <laughs> <laughs> Florida's a wonderful state. You pay, you pay no state income tax. In Pennsylvania, well, you pay six or seven or eight percent. I don't even know because it's. Well, I have it marked years. down here. I know how many days you're up there, so I have it marked down. No, here. I'm on my uh, six, four, 16th day, I think. You know, I still qualify for Florida. Well, I got to tell you something. The thing in Philadelphia, I mean, everybody wants these gun control laws like it's really going to make a difference. Like it didn't make a difference for Hunter Biden because he still had a gun and he's getting off. But the guy in Philadelphia, first of all, I don't know why no one caught some of these warning signs. I mean, for, he started dressing as a woman. But forget that. I don't want to even get into the transgender thing. The guy started wearing a bulletproof vest for like the last 30 days. So if you were at a, a Wawa, a 7-Eleven, a convenience store, and you saw a guy walk in with a bulletproof vest, wouldn't you maybe call the police? Wouldn't you be a little, al wouldn't you be a little alarmed? Or would you just be so nonchalant that a guy is walking around the city wearing a and, then, and his family is like, oh, yeah, he likes it. Like it's a windbreaker. Like who wears a, who wears a bulletproof vest like it's a windbreaker? I mean, well, if that I saw someone come in, I would call the police and say, oh, my God. There's a guy with a with a bulletproof vest on here. Well, that was the challenge during COVID because everybody was wearing masks, so you weren't alarmed. If you saw, saw somebody wearing a mask, you didn't think twice about it. But I agree with you. If I saw a guy in, in full army gear and a bulletproof vest, I would call the police. But 
Talking about the July 4th holiday, you know, I'm sitting here and, um, you know, I traveled a little, but not much. And I'm sitting here watching the news about these airports and the lines and two and three hour delays in the airports, all the airlines who got a ton of COVID money are blaming the government and the government's blaming the airlines. And here we have our Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg. Okay, so this guy was mayor of a town of 100,000 people before he got the job. It's probably the second biggest job besides being in the head of the military in the United States government. You're in charge of all roads. You're in charge of railroads. You're in trillions of, of dollars. Trillions. He, he trillions. Trillions. And he, and he was like the equivalent of State College, Pennsylvania. It was a college <laughs> right. town where Notre Dame was. Now, here's this guy. OK, so you had the job two years. You're a fuck up. You, you can't do the job. Fire him. It's done. It's over. It's toast. Look, I understand. I get the whole thing. They had to check a box. He's gay and they wanted a gay cabinet member and they wanted a woman and they wanted an African-American and they wanted an Asian. But the guy can't do the job. Fire his ass. You need to get some fat, bald guy in there that can do the job and get it fixed. Because when you sit in these airports for two and three hours, it's just insane. And then what they do is they kill you an hour at a time. And then three hours later, after you waited there, they cancel your flight. So you're completely screwed. But this uh, I think I think you got to give the guy a nickname. I think Trump has to come up with a nickname <laughs> that sticks. And I think that if you came up with a name like Piss Pot Pete, he should just be known as he should be known as Piss Pot Pete. So that way, whatever he touches, it's Piss Pot Pete is in charge of this thing. So that way you have, you know who to think. Because Pete, Pete Buttigieg is a tough name. It's tough to like, put, but Piss Pop Pete, you can say, ah, oh, Piss Pop Pete, here we are. United. And then he keeps blaming it on the weather. Really? It only affects, the weather only affects United Airlines? Maybe it's because he forced everybody to like have to retire at 62 years old. That's an airline pilot, which is ridiculously a young age. Well, what's remarkable, and you had a great analogy when, when I was talking to you yesterday about this, the guy is Secretary of Transportation, probably the second largest job, as I said, in the cabinet. And he takes a three-month maternity leave. Well, there are certain jobs. There are certain jobs you just can't take a maternity leave. Well, you're president right. of the United States. Exactly. Exactly. Like that's not, That comes with the territory, especially for a guy. Right. So here you are. You're only serving four years and you're taking it. I get it. You had a kid and everything. But let's say you're an NFL football player. And are you right, Gabby? Tell me about right. it. Well, you? well, if you're a football player and all of a sudden you're the quarterback and it's October 27th <laughs> and your wife gives birth and you have to go up to the team and say, listen, I'll be back if we make the playoffs because I'm taking off for the next eight weeks. They would turn around and say, well, no, you can't because your job, we need you right now. Well, his job, when we have strikes and we have a, 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 we have a, 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 an inventory shortage of, of merchandise, right. and, he's sitting, and he's sitting there on vacation – I mean, it's like, I shouldn't say vacation. Maternity leave. Maternity. Maternity leave. But it's like, come on, that's part of the time. I can't see a basketball player taking off for eight weeks. I mean, the season's over. It's so I the territory. There's certain jobs that when you take that job, you know you're going to be working. You know, it's a nonstop job for the period of time that you have that job. If you have a 16, 17 week football season, you can't take 12 of those weeks off because you had a child. It just it, and, it, and by the way, stuff happens. Shit happens. Take a look in the last 24. The news cycle, 24 hours is a big thing. I mean, if you take off all of a sudden, uh, Ukraine could have been eliminated when the war first started. They didn't even think Ukraine would last a maternity leave. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, what do you do with this guy? I mean, it's just like Ka Kamala Harris, if I said it right. I mean, you picked her because she she checked off a certain box that allowed you to win. You picked Pete Buttigieg because he now checks off a box. But 
once you go to try and get rid of one or two of these people, everybody goes insane in their in their corner. They just go nuts. But you just can't have chaos in transportation. Well, Dana, well, Dana White from the UFC, what he could do is on the undercard of <laughs> Musk, Musk versus Zuckerberg could be Buttigieg, piss pot Pete versus Kamala. <laughs> Kamala, I got this border, Harris. Uh, and put them on the undercard. And and that would be, people would watch that, wouldn't you? Who would win? It's just so insane. So anyway, we're, we're working through this Bunner High, Hunter, Bunner High, Hunter, Hunter Biden and all his sex scandals, Kennedy and his sex scandals, Trump obviously and his sex scandals. And then we have to go through Jeff Shell, who was head of NBC, $20 million a year job, gets fired because of a sex scandal. Then Jeff Zucker, head of CNN, gets fired because of a sex scandal. Then Matt this, Lauer. Matt Lauer gets fired because of sex $35 scandal. million dollar job. 35. Then this guy Eastbrook, head of McDonald's. He's making like $60 million a year. He's screwing around. He gets fired. And it's like everybody's having the sex is driving Bill me. Gates. Don't forget Bill. Oh, Will, Bill Will Gates. You. Now there's a whole expose <laughs> besides the fact that he was on <laughs> Pedophile Island with Jeffrey Epstein. And now they came out with the requirements to work for him that the gals got asked all these questions. Did you ever have an STD? How many sexual partners have? Have you had what positions do you like to have in bed? I mean, it's insane to get a job for his first charitable foundation. You have to do all this crazy stuff. But what type of poor? Thing, what type of poor movies do you like? Yeah, what kind of poor movies do you like? But the best is like this: Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos leaves his wife and gives her thirty-three billion dollars. Thirty-three billion. For Lauren Sanchez. Now, Jackie Mason, I don't know if you guys know him. He's an old time Jewish comedian. He's on the Johnny Carson show. And Johnny Carson says to him, Jackie, how come you've never been married? And Jackie Mason says to Johnny Carson, you marry everybody you see. You go out with them two weeks, you marry them, you get divorced, it costs you three million. You meet another girl, you go out with them, marry them, you're married to them three months, they get $7 million. Johnny, I have to tell you, women are really not that expensive. I mean, somebody's got to tell. Jeff goes, <laughs> I hope he stays with this girl for $33 billion. It's a lot of money. But it's like... The sex thing is controlling the world. So Gavi and I are talking about it. And we come upon, what was the guy's name, the legal analyst at CNN? <laughs> He's the best. I mean, like, first of all, I kept it. Jeffrey Tubin. I mean, Jeffrey Tubin, right. Harvard, Harvard educated. Been in uh, trouble a couple of times for... Uh, for indiscretions that he had. So it's not, so he has that already in the, <laughs> in the chamber. So now the guy knowing that he has this background, he decides that he's going to do a zoom call. Now, I don't know, like all of a sudden you see a couple of your, your uh, coworkers on a zoom call. What makes this guy decide he's going to like, like squeeze one out <laughs> as <laughs> during a zoom call and that everybody's watching it. Like everybody watched this guy rub one out there. And it's like, <laughs> and it's like, and the guy gets his job back. He's back <laughs> on CNN. I mean, how do you take him seriously? So now all of a sudden he sits on the sidelines for four months. He comes back and now he's going to interview someone and he's going to judge you. This is the guy who's going to judge another guy right. on like, and like looking at you thinking, oh, is he a good guy? He like, like, look at this guy's character. He's judging you. And this guy, has he, he has an urge that he has to rub one out <laughs> while he's on a Zoom call. I mean, it's unbelievable. I, I don't know. I've been single half of my adult life. I'm trying to figure this out, that a guy literally is that confused. He's on a Zoom call. He doesn't know that his Zoom camera is still running. And he's masturbating right on but, national but, TV. But... But what's crazy is let's say let's say you're a policeman, you're a fireman, you're a roofer, you're a contractor, whatever, and you come home from work and your wife says to you, "How was your day at work, dear?" 
and you could tell her all about your day. You know, there were some good times, some bad times. There were some rough times. Jeffrey Tubin, the guy's on TV. How hard can his day be? His wife says, how was your day? He says, horrible. Well, what happened? Well, I had this urge. I had to, like, rub one out on TV, <laughs> and everybody saw. I didn't get off the Zoom call. Everybody saw. Tell the kids, don't go to school for a week. It's embarrassing. I mean, like, how do you tell your wife what you did? And your children who are in high school. You have to say, listen, it might be a little rough for you in school for the next couple of days. Your dad did something really stupid. Well, they did have a, a public slaughtering of the guy. I mean, he was all over the newspapers. He lost his job. I don't think he's back on he, there. Is he's he? back. He's back. He's back he's on. Back. Uh, he's back. <laughs> There's and not enough went, qualified people. You know, he went to Harvard, and this is how he learned how to do that. Well, anyway, today I have an announcement. We have our very first guest. Now, unfortunately, our guest has laryngitis and can't talk. I will turn my camera over. Jerry Garcia from the <laughs> Grateful Dead has come here today. Jerry, say hi. There he is. Look at him. He looks terrific, right? He's got his pipe in his pocket. He's ready to go. You know, our treasurer likes him, Pat. He went. He just came back from the last uh, Grateful Dead and Company's concert. Did he, he was really? asked about that? He was just asked about that at the uh, hearings, and uh, yeah, he's a deadhead. How old is I, Jerome Powell? Uh, is he seventy? Is he over seventy? I think he's in his late sixties, but uh, yeah. you know, I look at him differently now. I think that's pretty cool. Sure, uh, I'm a deadhead. I'm a deadhead also, so I think it's uh, I think it's Look, great to see someone. He may, yeah, be what's not to like? to, he may be buying pre-rolls or gummies. I mean, now that we know he's a deadhead, <laughs> I mean, you go to a dead concert, you're sitting there, you're getting high. I mean, everybody well, around he, you. He, he, he wasn't at the White House this weekend, was he? Well, let's talk about that, Gabby. <laughs> I mean, cocaine was found at the White House this weekend. <laughs> what's the deal? What's So this is when I heard that. And, you know, obviously we'll never know because the, they're saying I'm not I have no proof. They're saying that the news is fixed, but they're saying it's impossible to be Hunter Biden's because he was gone from that room 72 hours and the Secret Service would have seen it. Yak, yak, yak. Give him a drug test. Let's now, let's find hey, out. right now. Hey, if you go to Vegas right now, it's on the big board. It's two to one. It's a Hunter. And is and, it, uh, is it really two to one? Uh, two to one. It's Hunter. Four to I'm one. It's his daughter. Man. Four to one, it's his daughter. She's 20 some <laughs> years old. She's there too. I mean, I mean, you got to, it's like long odds. It could be, you know, maybe it's Kamala's husband. You know, maybe he came in there and he just had to like do something while she was talking. But obviously, obviously they, they moved the venue. It was in the library. They're trying to let you know that it could be anybody. But listen, anybody that goes to the airport and if they wanted to take drugs on a, on a plane with them, they're scared. They're scared to just walk through a little thing with a wand that they have something in their pocket. To go into the White House, to be, this is a special guest to go through this entrance. You got to empty your pockets. You got to give them your cell phone. You're basically strip searched. And all of a sudden, you're not going to sit there and bring your, your Coke, your little packet of Coke into the White House. That's the day that you just got to leave it behind, unless you're an addict. Now, I know one addict that lives there, Hunter. But besides that, now you go in there and all of a sudden you're walking around and you look around and you say, hey, you lost the rest of the group. The rest of the group that's getting a tour, you find yourself that you have an extra minute. So what do you do? You decide you're going to whip out your packet. You're going to whip out your packet. You're going to do a quick line. And then you panic and you leave your packet there. I mean, like, they want you to believe that. And you have CNN and mainstream media say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what happened. No, it didn't happen. What happened is Hunter went downstairs. He didn't want anybody to know that he was doing it. And at like 1 o'clock in the morning, he did a couple lines and he left his thing there. Now, listen, if you can leave your laptop somewhere, you can leave a little packet there. Very believable. And that's why Vegas is right. Two to one odds. It's Hunter. Well, I mean, he's driving a car at 182 miles an hour. Now, my whole life, I've been very fortunate and I've had a lot of fast cars. Maybe, maybe I went 120 or 110. How do you drive a car 182 miles? I didn't even know cars went to 182 miles an hour. But... I don't it, even think Dale Earnhardt drives 172 miles an hour. Like I, I mean, it's a crazy number. But when you think about it, how hard is this? Okay, everybody that comes into the White House, there's a log. 
everybody that leaves there's a log. Why don't you drug test right now every a hair follicle? A hair follicle. Yeah, all you do is cut a little hair follicle. I've had that done to me, you know, where they cut a little hair follicle off and it stays in your system for six months. Do it. I mean, you're working for the federal government. What are there, 20 people, 30 people? I don't care. Well, but they want you to believe that the Secret Service, get this, they want you to believe that the Secret Service is investigating this. The same Secret Service that got rid of the gun for Hunter Biden, that retrieved it from the trash can. The same Secret Service that uh, when he was at the Hotel Marmart uh, getting thrown out, they were there. Yeah, nobody gets – uh, you die there like John Bellucci. You don't get thrown right. out. Right. I nobody mean, they're, they're standing out. there to rescue him. The Secret Service has been there to protect Hunter Biden now for the last five years. So – we're now supposed to believe that the Secret Service is on top of this, like just like the Department of Justice, just like uh, Garland. Nobody's doing this. They're sitting there saying, can you believe this kid? This kid is like a thorn in our side. What's next? I mean, this this uh, uh, our, our, the press secretary, KGP or whatever her name is. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Pierre, Shane, Chappelle, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, she, she has nothing to say. Any, I mean, she's running out of things to say. She has a binder, and she can't even find something in the binder to protect him. Well, I want to know where she buys that wig. The wig she wears, the multicolored wig. I mean, it's pretty interesting. I mean, and looks- she's biased, isn't? Isn't her partner uh, works for MSNBC or? Yeah, CNN? yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, she, I mean, come she, on, it's everything's biased. She she dates uh, a gal that works at MSM or how does Trump call it? Uh, I forget how he MSNBC. But you have Hunter Biden who makes this plea deal, and part of the part of the arrangements are he's going to submit himself to drug tests for three years. So why wait till July twenty sixth when he makes the plea deal? Right now, make him take a drug test, a mobile drug test. Let NBC, CB, you know, film it on CNN, you know, or do a pay per view. It'll be, it'll be a big pay per view. By the <laughs> way, by the way, if you did a pay per view of Hunter, Bi- he would make more money than his paintings. It would be like when LeBron Bra- James did the decision and he went to South Beach. It would right. be Le- Hunter Biden getting a hair follicle removed from him and a test right on the spot. The whole country would be watching, and I think half the country would be if they took the odds, two to one. You know, they would be betting. I say he fails the test. And I, I think that would be a yeah, that would be great. Was, uh, hair follicles six months. I mean, the guy, but let's think about it. How does okay, you you're the son of the president of the United States, you have secret service protection. How does he get a nickel bag of cocaine? I, I mean, is a secret service agent go get it for him, or does his wife uh, she's got protection? How did, how did Jeffrey Epstein kill himself? Right. There were 17 <laughs> guards that, you know, had a bad excuse that day. Yeah. yeah. I mean, somebody out. somebody helped him, but I think he got it on his own. And, you know, they tried to make like he beat. Look, g- getting off of crack cocaine, I'm not going to, you know, that that is it's very hard, very difficult. I would gather most people can't do it. So it, it would be an unbelievable achievement. If he did get off of crack like they say that he has been, then why not share it with the country? Everybody taking the fentanyl and all these overdoses. You see the people that are zombies in uh, Philadelphia and San Francisco and Los Angeles and Chicago, New York. Why can't you tell us what did he take? Did he take a special drug that's like a, a methadone that's maybe a little stronger? Maybe he could share with everybody on how he is back. I mean, the guy's back at Camp David. He's traveling. He's in Ireland. The guy looks like he's... Uh, like he beat it. If he beat right. it, share sure. it. Right. Well, uh, when I get home, which is very shortly, a very good friend of mine, Matt Lunsford, um, who I who I play golf with, uh, is a former heroin addict and crack addict, and now it's a success story, American success story. Really good looking, muscular guy. He's all tattooed up, and. He now owns 11 rehabs in Florida. We're going to have him on the show and he's going to discuss Hunter Biden. He's going to discuss addictions and he's going to give us the inside angle on Unbandaged of 
how it's possible for this guy to have beat it and discuss, you know, the drug problem in America, this fentanyl. But the bigger picture is, here you're the president of the United States, the most powerful man in the world. You talk about July 4th. He represents America. He gets on Air Force One. It says United States of America. There's the White House. At what point, I understand you love your kid, but with all this bullshit going on, at what point do you say to your kid, look, pal, you know, I got to lose you. You can live in the White House, but you kind of have to disappear. You can't, I can't take you front and center everywhere. It's just a bad look for America. Everybody's laughing at us. Because I think he needs them. I think he needs them because he can't stand on his own two feet. He doesn't know how to get off of a stage. So as bad as Hunter is, he still needs a guy that is that he knows has his back a little bit. But it's uh, – listen, look what he thought. We haven't even – besides the drugs, the one thing we haven't mentioned that's also hurting Joe Biden with the American people is – He's told everybody that he has six grandkids. I wouldn't have said anything. But instead, he made it a point to tell everybody, if you're asked, I only have six grandkids, even though even though his son is willing to pay child support and was tested as the father of the seventh grandchild. He has a, a pretty granddaughter that's probably four or five years old already, and he's just not acknowledging her. Yet, he'll take a picture of his fireplace and he has a stocking up and he has a stocking of even the dog he has everybody including the dog and doesn't have a, any never met her the rest of the country is sitting there saying hey it's time that you at least acknowledge if you don't want to accept her at least acknowledge that she's born and she's alive and you know i don't want to get into the abortion thing but like she's here okay yeah, maybe you wanted an abortion you so didn't what's get your one theory why is he doing that i mean what's the difference to him it's Biologically, his because I think he's, I think all of a, I think he's so stupid. He's worried about image at this stage. Like all of a sudden, the, I got to be worried this, about image with the son. Like being, I don't, I don't know. Is this the straw that broke the camel's back? Is this the image that he's like? Oh my god, there's a great. I mean, like really, this it's is where he rolls the little kid. Right. So I don't understand. What's the problem? Can you um, imagine? It would be a homework made for TV movie. If he had this child, he's a you know super liberal, the president. He has this child out of wedlock or whatever, however you want to frame it, and he embraces this cute, gorgeous little blonde-haired girl on the White House lawn and welcomes her to his family. I mean, it would be like a, I, I, you know, I could, I could be run his marketing campaign for this. I mean, I got you all know something. I got one better for his marketing campaign. That well, you are a problem company. solver. <laughs> I, I, I am. You know how I would help it? I would send during football season, SEC, Arkansas, University of Arkansas, huge in the SEC. The Suey, that's their nickname, you know? And uh, he could yell out Suey the whole time. Meanwhile, he should go down to an SEC football game, crack open a Bud Light, Joe yeah, Biden, funny. meet his granddaughter, sip some Buds with some of the other tailgaters there, and maybe people would sit there and say, hey, he can cure the Bud Light situation. He had greets the grandkid, the SEC, the Bible Belt area. You know, he's a little weak in those areas. And Joe becomes a regular guy. I think he is regular Joe. I think that this is a huge opportunity for him to look. He's not going to get, you know, the MAGA vote anyway. And those are the people that won't like it. So this this will reinvigorate his base. He's embracing his seventh grandchild. I think this is just a bad look. But. I did speak to a friend of mine today. He he shall go nameless, but um, he owns 20 sports bars or 25 sports bars, huge sports guy. And I said, I want to hear from the horse's mouth. What's going on with Bud Light? I mean, is it a dead beer? Is it coming back? What's going on? He said, it's a work in progress. People really have short memories it's about it, it, it stopped falling. It's not falling any further. It's not going up, but it's not falling. So 
you know, the death of Bud Light and, and Little Bud Light, you know, coming along with the uh, bigger can, as we spoke about on our last podcast, may, you know, we'll have to see what happens. Nah, you wait. I'm telling you, football season's coming. When all of a sudden nobody's drinking Bud Light during football season and the NFL comes, it's over. I'm telling you, by Super Bowl, Bud Light is done. And I just want to say one thing. I want to go back to say one thing. This press secretary, Jean Pierre, Jean Pierre, yeah, she says she says one thing every day that just bothers me. It's just one thing. It's like a pet peeve I have. Anybody that asks her a question, she always answers it as, as you know. Like if it would be you, it would be as you know, Cuddy. Like right. why can't why can't one reporter say no? I don't know. I don't know. Like, she always wants to give her point of view. Like, they know, like, as you know, we're doing everything we can. No, I don't know. So why shouldn't someone be able to answer her back to say, no, we don't know. Explain it to us. Explain it to us. What do you think? They pay? Uh, what do you think she makes a year there? I mean, I could do that job. She's like, well, I have to refer you to the Pentagon. Well, I have to refer you to the White House Counsel's Office. Well, I have to refer you to the commissary. I mean, she doesn't answer any questions. She's referring every answer. Do you think? Do you think she was qualified for this job, or do you I don't think even it know was another inclusion, or was it another inclusion type of hire? Well, I don't know what her background is. Where'd she went? Where'd she go to college? Did she, was she a communicator? I think she went, I think she, I think she went to Ivy League. I'm not sure if she went to Princeton or Brown, you know, originally from Haiti. Uh, but she's, uh, you know, she's, I think she did uh, public relations or she did marketing or communications at one of those schools. But if you want to go through the list of include inclusion that, that Joe Biden has done that has heard of, press secretary piss pop Pete. Kamala Harris. I mean, these are people that are just unqualified, even as the uh, press secretary, unqualified. I mean, I mean, some of the cabinet members that he has. Yeah. Unqualified. Well, that That's what, you know, I'm not going to stick up for Donald Trump because we want him on the show to call in. But one thing about him, he just he went right from his reality TV show to the White House where everybody got fired. You didn't do your job. You're fired. Rex Tillerson. He was chairman of the board and president of Exxon. No lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy he was secretary of state. He's not a lightweight. Kelly, the uh, guy, you know, the guy right? Kelly, that, that wasn't his name. Kelly, the guy that was like uh, chief of staff. Like, yeah, uh, Kelly fired a mad dog. Uh, what was mad? Previous. Dog? Right? Previous fired. Previous uh, mad dog. Mad dog was fired. Yeah, the guy. I mean, that, right. Yeah, he fires mad dog. But meanwhile, Joe Biden lets the guy get out of Afghanistan. Millie and the other guy, and we're like, oh, let's there. get him. Yeah, they're still there. We keep we keep making mistakes. I mean, China is laughing at us right now. So is Iran. So is everybody. Right. It's mad like, dog Mattis. Mad dog Mattis. Uh -oh, he, was, Mattis. he was Secretary right. of Defense. Fired him. You know, Kelly. He walks, Kelly walks him to Air Force One, walks Trump to Air Force One, you know, salutes him goodbye, shakes his hand. Trump gets on Air Force One and sends out a tweet. I just fired Mad right. Dog. Yeah, the guy didn't even know. He gets wait, wait a second. I, and I'll tell you something else that Trump does do that's pretty funny. I mean, Governor Christie, he sits there and throws these punches at Donald funny. Trump like he's, hurt, like he's hurting him. And all Donald Trump has to do is he sends out one little tweet or one little thing on his truth show, and it's a picture of Christie sleeping out like a light on an airplane, looking like looking really big, like look just a big picture of him. Looks, yeah, it looks huge. And he goes, ah, twenty five minutes of work. Look at him; needs a nap. I mean, he just has a way of saying something that is politically incorrect but very funny, and it basically people look at him and he comes up with nicknames. And everybody's, everybody's got to Google that picture of Chris Christie sitting in his airplane seat. And he, you know, he doesn't, he's rolling over the sides of the air, the seat, you know, and, and Trump sends the picture out and he says, after 24 minutes of hard work, here's Chris Christie. I mean, it's really <laughs> pretty funny. Right. I and mean, that's what you need to do. And, you know, but, just, and how about, by the way, we coming up though, uh, how about this whole thing with uh, where they're going to have the primaries where, you know, Biden's pushing South Carolina and New Hampshire saying, no, we're going to stay here. And if you don't want to come on the ballot, Kennedy's going to win the primary of New Hampshire. 
Now he's going to have to take a debate with this guy. I mean, he can't possibly take a, a debate with um, Kennedy. How can he do that? I mean, Kennedy will mop the floor with him. I mean, Joe Biden. I don't know. I don't first know of all, I don't know if the guy is capable of standing on his feet for an hour and a half. I, I mean, maybe it would be he'd set up the rules where you're sitting behind a desk or something. Who would um, win? Who would win between Joe Biden and Fetterman in a debate? Well, let's talk about Fetterman. Fetterman is the Congress is the senator um, that beat Dr. Oz in Pennsylvania. It's a good point, Ozzy. Now, uh, Gavi, uh, Fetterman had a stroke, but they still ran him. It was like weekend at Bernie's. You know, they propped him up and they still ran him and he won. Well, now he's in the United States Senate and he can't capture a thought and can't think and can't speak. Well, Gavi had a brilliant idea. The best guy in the world is Alan Dom. He was city council in Philadelphia, ran for mayor, lost by a little bit, just the Philly mayor. He would have been the best candidate. Business We've guy, made, business guy. Business guy, multi-skillionaire business guy, real estate mogul, problem solver like Gavi. And now Josh Shapiro, rock star in his uh, black bomber jacket, coming off of helicopters and everything. He he needs to fire Fetterman. He's got to get rid of Fetterman. I get it. You needed a Democrat in the Senate, the seat. Now you got to bring in the dominator, Alan Dom, the dominator, because he'll be a great senator for the great state of Pennsylvania. And I think it's time to fire Fetterman. It, it, you know, the Fetterman jokes are getting old. We got to get rid of them. And by the way, and by the way, Pennsylvania would embrace anything Governor Shapiro would do. And and all of a sudden, uh, he would get to choose. He would get to choose them. You would end up with Alan Dom. State would be much better off. Shapiro would be would be better off. And he, like you said, he's a rock star right now, so he could do it. Everybody would be happy. Republicans, Democrats, everybody would be happy. I mean, right now we're at a point where, like I said, Joe Biden debating Fetterman. How about if you had to watch Fetterman debate Diane Feinstein? How do you think that would? Go? <laughs> I mean, they would have to. They would. They would have to say we started. The, the debate started. The both of them would be staring there, and they would have to say we started five minutes ago. No one would answer a question. Could you imagine well, there are two senators? That's two out of 100. Out of 100 senators, we could have two of them like debating each other, not staring into space. <laughs> Drooling. So <laughs> well, the, right now, we talked about how great this country is, but, you know, it's overrun by all this sex stuff. I mean, you have senators that can't function, um, but America's great. We're going to fix it. Anyway. Our, next, our next holiday, Labor Day. It's piss pop beats busiest day of the year oh i hope he doesn't have another kid i hope i, mean, that, I don't know I, when's joe biden going to fire somebody i want to see him fire somebody i mean who do you think it is who do you think it'll be wow he's got a long list of people that are not competent the first one should be hunter biden fire him i was going to say, I, was, I, was gonna <laughs> I, mean, say like, I would drug hunter test biden. the dude and say find out if this dude has drugs in his system i would just say you know what hunter you know, I'm going to rent you a house out in Los Olas, California, you know, hang out there for the next two years and, you know, we'll see you. And just to throw a little curveball your way, just to end the show, Jill Biden, the first lady, she stinks, too. I mean, she's sitting there telling the American people that Joe is the education president. Seriously? He shut down the schools. I mean, it's like nobody's happy with the school. what's going on in the schools. Zero. Nobody's happy. And he's going to be known as the education president. Vote for me. Really? Well, I, the issue I have with her, and I don't really know women's clothing, but normally I like women in sneakers. They look great. But um, usually it's with a pair of khakis or jeans. She wears sneakers with every dress she wears. I mean, what's with the sneakers and the dress? I mean, you're in that business, Gavi, jewelry and everything. I've never seen women wear sneakers and, and dresses. Is that is that a fashion statement? I don't uh, maybe know. I think it, I think that is. If you're if you're war working in you know in the city and you got to go from uh, you're walking oh. outside, it's more comfortable and stuff like that. But I mean, all she's doing is walking in the White House. 
Right. But they yeah. usually keep their high heels in their pocketbook. And once yeah. they walk in somewhere, they change out. Anyway, Gabby, great show. Right. I got my ass off today. You were super funny. I Next week, I think um, I'm trying. Uh, my son and my daughter-in-law, they were due with their first baby two days ago. So I'm sitting here on pins and needles and soon as the child is born, I'm on my way down to Brazil. It's a short 10 hour plane ride, you know, to welcome my new grand, uh, my first grandchild, my granddaughter, they're having a little girl. And um, then I'm gonna pop back and maybe do a broadcast with Gavi back home in Boca Raton, Florida, where I will be safe, unlike right. Philadelphia. I, I will be at the Phillies game Sunday. I'm going down to Miami to see the Phillies uh, in the Miami uh, Marlins. Okay, I'm willing to bet you 10 bucks. I'm going to say there's going to be less than 5,000 people at that game. No, because I think there's going to be more than 5,000 Philly fans. <laughs> but right now we haven't lost on the road. I, it's great. I'm, I'm sitting sec two rows behind the visitor's bench. I mean, it, it's the greatest thing in the world. You can't get these seats in Philadelphia. Here, you just pick up, boom, you got your seats. It's it's great. Did, did they win last night? The game was 4-4. They, they won. They did. Yeah, yeah they came they back. I, I turned it off at of 4-4. I was with my son. I turned it off at of 4-4. They're 11-0 and 0 on the road. 11-0. and 0, Unbelievable Phillies. All right, Gavi, right, have a great week. You too. And Take care. Take care. I'm on